In this video, we're going to talk about the SN2 reaction mechanism. So in this case, we have a methyl chloride that is reacting with a hydroxide ion. What's going to happen in this situation is the negatively charged oxygen is going to approach the carbon. Now keep in mind that the carbon is going to have a partial positive charge and the chlorine is going to have a partial negative charge due to the fact that chlorine is more electronegative than carbon so it's going to pull these electrons in the bond a little closer to itself. When the negative oxygen approaches the carbon it's going to repel the chlorine which has a partial negative charge and the chlorine is going to take the electrons in the bond with it because it's more electronegative than carbon. It can pull on those electrons stronger. So what you end up getting is the CH3 is going to bond to the hydroxide, it's technically bonds to the oxygen, and then you are also going to have the chloride ion floating around as well. Now if you want to draw the transition state for this reaction, you'd have the carbon with the three hydrogens, and then what's being attached to the carbon is going to be the OH that's coming in, and then what's leaving is the chlorine. You put a little black brackets around that, and that's how you draw the transition state. This all happens in one step in the SN1 reaction. So let's go over another example. In this case, the sodium is just going to be a spectator. It's not going to do anything in this reaction. The nucleophile, or what's going to replace this bromine, is going to be the OCH3. So, this negatively charged particle, the electrons from it are going to approach this carbon atom. And then what is going to happen is that the bromine is going to take the electrons in the bond with the carbon with it, and leave. So at the end what you're going to get is an ether, an OCH3 which is a methoxy group, then the bromine will have left and have turned into a bromide ion. Let's go over another example. What would happen in this reaction? So in this case, the iodide ion is going to be the nucleophile. And every time you have a halogen, as one of the nucleophiles, it's going to be a negatively charged halogen with eight valence electrons. What typically happens is that a set of these electrons are going to attack this carbon, and since the bromine is partially negative and the carbon is partially positive, the negative electrons of the iodine are going to repel this bromine. So the bromine is going to take the electrons in this bond with it and leave. So at the end what you have is iodine replacing the bromine. However, notice that we have a wedge attached to the bromine, which means that the bromine is coming out of the page. The iodine is going to want to attack the carbon from the opposite direction from the bromine. So therefore, the major product in this reaction is going to be iodine on the dash as opposed to the wedge. And this is called an inversion.
because it's the reverse of what was there before and this is going to be the major product and the minor product is going to be the retention product where you had a dash before and you have it or you had a wedge before and have a wedge now now let's talk about a chair confirmation ring and how we can have an SN SN2 reaction happen on that. Let's say we have this bromine right here in the axial position facing upward and it's being reacted with hydroxide. And hydroxide has three lone pairs. The hydroxide ion, which is the oxygen has a negative charge, is going to attack this carbon, and then the electrons in this bond between the carbon and the bromine are going to go toward the bromine, and we are going to have is going to be the hydroxide in an equatorial position facing down. And the reason you have this is because the, once again, the nucleophile wants to attack this carbon from the back of the bromine. It doesn't want to go like this because then the bromine would be in the way. And the bromine has a partial negative charge which would repel the, the negatively charged oxygen. So when it attacks from the back, the bond on this carbon is going to move from being an axial up position to an equatorial down position like that. Now let's talk about the rate of this reaction. The rate is going to be dependent on the concentration of the substrate and the concentration of the nucleophile, which means that if the substrate concentration is doubled, the rate is going to be doubled. If the concentration of the substrate is tripled, the rate is tripled. And if you have two or three, it's going to be times six, and so on and so forth. So these have exponents of one on them. In terms of an energy graph, There's only one transition state, and right here it's transition state 1. You need to know that this whole reaction, which is SN2, happens in one stage. So at first you have the carbon chain attached to the halogen, and then the next thing you know is that you have the carbon chain attached to the nucleophile. Now, let's compare a few examples and see in which alkyl halide would an SN2 reaction be most likely to occur. So compare this, these examples right here, and determine which one is the best for an SN2 reaction and which one is the worst and just rank them. So what we need to pay attention to is the carbon that the chlorine is on. So if you look at this example on the left side, the carbon that the chlorine is on is this one. It's attached to two other carbons, therefore it's going to be a secondary carbon or a secondary alkyl halide. This example right here, it's attached to three carbons, so therefore it's a tertiary alkyl halide. On this one, it's attached to one carbon, so it's a primary. And on this one, 
the carbon attached to the chlorine is not attached to any other carbon, so that's it's a methyl halogen. You need to be familiar with the fact that methyl alkyhalides are better in SN2 reactions than primary alkyhalides, which are better than secondary, and those are better than tertiary. So the lower the number of carbons your halogen carbon is attached to, the more likely you're going to get an SN2 reaction.